Hello YouTube, and welcome back to Cage Shadows, and let's play Shadow in Hong Kong, episode 16. We seem to have plot on the horizon. Be afraid, be very afraid. Right, let's go and see what Auntie's got to say. She has information about the white-faced man. Kindly Cheng is in the midst of emptying two plastic shopping bags when you enter. She places the contents in the pile on her mahjong table. Two liquor bottles without labels, a box of thin black cigars, an assortment of individually wrapped gourmet chocolates, and a large caliber pistol with electrical tape wrapped around its grip. Ah, good. You're here. She finishes with the plastic bag and throws them to the floor. Seems like forever since we saw each other. Forever? You haven't been gone that long, auntie. Uh, welcome back. Was your trip worthwhile? The voice is filled with rusty energy. Yes, my darling, yes. I met with several contacts with my network who referred me to others in neighboring cities. Regardless of how far technology moves forward, tradition demands that some things be handled face to face. I've returned with information that will lead you to the plastic faced man, the man who killed Raymond Black. Excellent. While you were gone, we uncovered a relationship between Josephine and Raymond. Uh, we try Did you? And what was that you? Wound me. The man who raises isn't Raymond Black, he's Edward Sang, son of Josephine. You were raised by Josephine's son. That explains where Edward went when he disappeared years ago, Seattle. No idea why he disappeared. No, just he went missing after Josephine complete, completed rebuilding the walled city. That was in the early 30s. A face twists into a mask of disgust. You realise what this means, don't you, my sweet? That inbred little goat whore was cold enough to have her own son executed. You're more reason to find the plastic face man. You said you had news of, of your own. Your turn. Even more reason to find the plastic face man, what you found out. Everything you need to move forward. She grabs the ball. I know the identity of the plastic face man. Wow. His name is Li Tai Lang, and he's an independent contractor. A trusted, deniable asset who handles all of Josephine Sung's more delicate operations, off the books and away from public eye. The plastic face man is her shadowy right hand outside of the corp. Chang doesn't bother with the glass. She takes a long pull of the stinking bottle and wipes her mouth with the back of her hand, and I know how to find him too. I made contact with an information broker, Zizor, bleh, who works out of an abandoned night market in Shikip Mai called the Sing House Court. It's not hard to find. She takes another pull out of the bottle. Zai, I'm going to call him, has gained access to the plastic faced man's complete itinerary. Where he'll be, who he'll be with, and what sort of security he have, the works. She grins, glassy eyed. You can use it to perform an extraction. Grab him and find out what he knows. Great. Um, got it. Go to look for night uh, and find information. Did you find out why Lee has a face made of plastic? It's not just his face. Lee Sung's entire skull is synthetic. He's designed himself to be the perfect corporate operative. He installed a unique piece of headwear, you see. It allocates and compartmentalizes client related memories so that they can be erased upon completion of a job. And as added security measure, his, the cortical implant will wipe his memory if it detects he's been captured. So we need to circumvent the implant. Exactly. Unless you can find a way around the cortical implant, you'll have no way to extract the information he has and figure out what happened to Raymond. She circles the mouth of the bottle with a finger. Now I've done my part in this, my darling. You need to find a way to neutralize that device. As well interjects, I know a way. I've heard of something like this before. I met someone in the Matrix who had to, sh had to shriek a similar memory wipe implant once. It was a requirement for a big job, and she pulled it off. Keep talking. Her hands are this dreamland, and I know where to find her. All we have to do is convince her to give up the secret of how she did it. No small one. Okay, Isabel. And I will go and see dreamland before we hit the information broker. Then we grab Plastic Face Man. No matter who you choose to help you snatch this guy, I'm going to be there when you extract the information from him about Raymond. You got it, Alex? We should all be there. I need. I know that I want to see this. Very good, my darlings. Now listen to me. After you get what you need from the plastic face man, I want you to end him. You understand? I need to send a very clear message that this is what happens when you mess with Chinese Chang's operation. With Chinese Chang's people. Josephine takes night jar, I take her plastic face man. Once you snatch the plastic face man, Sang will know something is happening and events will unfold quickly after that. You best close out any present business you have before heading to see Zai. Do you understand? Yep, I get it. Once we set the ball rolling on this, there's no turning back. That's right, my darling. No more side jobs, no more dilly dances. 
Connection the ramps on the Mijong's head with be sure that your affairs are in order before you head to that information broker. Okay, so um to be honest, that is kind of sounds like the end game. So that means we've got a lot of talking to do to um find out a bit more about our runners, our, our companions, before we do that then. Uh, I want to talk to Goblet, see if I can get her whatever mission she has. I should probably sort of do Izzy's mission in case I can um, get some good tech out of it, I guess. Goblet. Goblet looks up from a hot plate. That's how you approach. A smile creases her face. You raise an eyebrow and gestures at the cabin around you. You know, the bolt has really been shaping up over the past few days. All the work that we've been putting into her, she's starting to feel like a real home. Anyway, enough of the boat. She puts her hand on her hips, sending madness scurrying. Ready for next lesson, or you just want to chat? Um, any thoughts on the last run? I never had a chance to go to Shangla before. Too ritzy for a little street rat, street rat like me. And you know what? I'm kind of okay with that. All those stuffed shirts and fancy food are nice, but give me a cheap corner store any day. I did pocket some of the silver though, and a teapot. That talent was a real piece of work. Glad to see the guy put in the ground. He made my skin crawl. He was kind of the guy who tortured animals for fun. Even the 29 seemed a little scared of him. I doubt anybody's going to shed tears over him for too long. Right. I guess we go for the next lesson and see if that leads us where we need to go. Sorry for all the dialogue, guys. Yeah. That's good. I was hoping that you want to keep up going with this. It's good for you. I'm kind of enjoying it too. Gullet runs hand through the knot of ropes in her hair. I can't play the look on her face. I'm late. She turns her attention. All right. This is going to be another long story, so I'm going to thinking we should take it in chunks. If you've got a question, you can ask them along the way. And if you need to take a break, we can come back to some good. Uh, don't ask to help. All right. Your sure sounds good. So last time I told you about the event that brought an end to my illustrious career as a subcontractor. This time, I'm going to tell you about a run that I went on with my on my regular team. Is this where you, where you started running with Isabel? No, this was long before Is hit the streets as a runner. We were friends and everything, but she still, she was still learning to deck back then. She was good for her age, but she wasn't ready for prime time. Don't know anyone from the group that I'm talking about. They're all gone now anyway. Sorry. Thanks, but it's alright. When you run the shadows, losing people is an occupational hazard. Our shadow runners were disposable assets. It shouldn't come as a surprise when we get used up and tossed away. Same with the barons. Yeah, you know as people die and it's sad, but there are no sense in moping about it. It's about the team you're running with. Sure. She extends her hand so she can count off the teammates on her fingers. Madness scurries down her sleeve. Our muscles are Hawaiian Jew with poor impulse control, big round guy with lumberjack arms and ringlets in his hair. He was called Honu. I guess he loved turtles. I don't know. Street names are weird. We had a tech specialist, Egret. She was tall, gawky, dyed, dyed her hair black, bone white. She had a drone named Altro that followed her around like a lost puppy. She was kind of a jack of all trades, but she'd get the job done. Fun at parties too. And he's fact a team leader with a guy named Sue. He was a wiry troll, if you can imagine that. Probably about 2% body fat, all skin and bones. Walked with a hunch to make himself look smaller. He was a shaman, followed rat like me. Can't be many that can't be too many rap shamans out there. Not that I've met, but Sue seemed like a really good guy. We got along fine. I actually really liked everyone on the team. They were a lot of fun to run with. How did you meet this group of yours? Through mutual friends, we actually all lived together before we decided to run as a team. There was this floating squatters commune out in the Hong 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 Bay. It's probably still out there actually, I haven't been back in a long time, but I spent a few years of the thing, the rest of the team lived there with me. Squatters commune. Yep, it's what we call the sinking, stinking ship. The sinking ship. It was like an enormous raft, all bolted together from old shipping containers. Wasn't the most comfortable. Okay, I've got, I think I've got the grass of the team. Thank you, go. Okay, keep going. All right, moving on. So one day, Sue got to the job. Met a client in Victoria Harbour. Rich Eastern Tiger, exact. Guy wants to steal something from him, a shiny object. I know, I know, it's stupid, right? But that was how the Johnson described it to us: the, the shiny object. That was what he wanted to get. He never gave it any other name. Seriously, a rat shaman to steal a shiny object. Yeah, you can see how the gig would be hard for us to resist. Anyway, the client told us what to look for. He described it as a chunk of red jade about the size and shape of an ostrich egg. Wow, that's big. With a mirror polished surface and gold wire inlays. He said that I'd have to, 
they'd have paper charms hanging off it, food talismans, tail sorcery stuff. We weren't supposed to touch those. Kind of also was about the shiny object, then owner, an old hedge wizard turned entrepreneur named Kong. Where are you supposed to hedge wizard? They had the whole wise old station going on. He had the robes, the little hat, the kind smile, oh, and the pierced resistance, and long wispy beard. He was as mean as a snake, though. Had a rep to prove it. Intel said the old man was keeping the shiny objects in one of his warehouses. Had a bunch of them. Built himself a nice little empire selling magical paraphernalia through puppet vendors in the night market. Supposedly, a good fifth of the stalls in that place were on his payroll. Got it. Keep going. So we cased the warehouse for a couple of nights before the run, you know, did some recon, took some notes. Sorry. From what we've seen, they were pretty sure that Zai was keeping our payday in vault area at the very right back of the building. Security was pretty heavy though. He was paying a local tribe for protection. So that was the one who came up with the plan. We split up outside into the warehouse in two teams. Team A would create diversion. Team B would hit the vault while security was looking the other way. We'd grab our payday, regroup and get the hell out. Okay, how'd it work out? Surprisingly well, up to a point. Team A, um, Honu and Egret circled around the loading dock just like we planned. Two and I waited by the service entrance. We didn't have to wait long. A couple of minutes in, we heard the ungodly crash, then another, then another. It turns out Egret had rigged had rigged into the network of automated forklifts. She had six of them running the mock in the loading dock, chasing down workers and crashing themselves through anything marked fragile. <laughs> That's quite funny. <laughs> Next time we're on a run with a loading dock, remind me about a forklift truck. It's awesome, right? Grit really outdid herself. I wish I could have been there to see it. English distraction did what it's supposed to do. Soon I watched most of the tried guys at the service entrance abandon the post. I went hauling off the loading dock. A couple of guys were basically about to stay back, but we handled them easily enough. Slipped inside, made a baseline for the back of the warehouse where the shiny object was supposed to be. Let me guess. You went wrong. No, actually it was there, just like we thought it would be. The door was open and everything. The shiny object was sitting in, in a teak cradle. Gleam reflected light. Just like that, the client had said it had a ring of tail with talons heading off like a glass skirt. The paper all crinkled with age. We didn't waste any time. I reached and grabbed the thing. I felt strange from my gloves. The jade sort of pulsed as it had a heartbeat. That sounds ominous. Yeah, tell me about it. I, drew, I wanted to drop the damn thing, but it was our payday, so I slipped into my satchel and said I couldn't get the flap closed quickly enough. The package being secure, soon I turned to hightail out, and then things went to shit. Object? No, not the shiny object. Old man's way. He was standing there right in front of us, larger than life. I'm guessing that he, when he heard the commotion in the loading dock, he'd come running. Well, Warden, to make sure his treasure was safe. At the chance, uh, it wasn't because I'd already stolen the thing. He looked displeased. What do you do? What do you think we did? He had our backs to the walls. We lit the old bastard up. It's pretty epic. Truth be told, spirits were summoned. Spells were discharged. The vault door melted behind Zwan, like something out of a movie. At one point, the old man leapt onto Sarah's back and tried to bite his ear off. Remember we play by play, the fight went in the end and we crushed him. Unfortunately, the fight had caused some collateral damage. At some point during the showdown was zone, the control panel for the vault door must have eaten an arc of lightning or a blast of powerball, it toast, all black and melted and neither of us could fix it. So you trap that sounds bad. It was. I had I paid down my satchel but we were stuck in the vault, and it was the only matter of time before the old man's arena security guys found us in there. There's still a way out, a ventilation duct up in the high rafters, but it's too small for so to lift it through. He was a troll after all. I had the shiny object, we have a left suit there, I'm sure he got to him well, you do the math. So, here's a conundrum. I've got a payday on my satchel, the team is split, it's inevitable that more 49ers are going to find us, but we don't know when or how many. You're going to kind of hold on their own alone dock for now. I can say we're soon to help fight off the inevitable wave of triads, but we're badly outnumbered, like badly, the odds of survival weren't good for either of us. Egret, if Egret weren't pinned down alone dock, she could probably get the vault to open, but in order to get here, I'd have to leave something alone in the vault. If the eyes and reinforced fine super get back, we'll figure it well. Now there's an Irish settle, not a lot to I know. I'd go and get egret. Could have done that I guess, it might have worked of course I couldn't have gotten to gun down in the vault too, but in retrospect that wouldn't have been a huge loss. Anyway, that wasn't what I did. I saw what I thought would be the best way to save Des when I hadn't took it. I fished the shiny object out of my bag, I still remember to have I tell us how to rig the crinkles in my hand. I remember just shrugging and saying, what the hell of it? I put the thing into his bare hands and told him to go to go nuts. Well, it was almost like Sue had been waiting for me to pass him the thing. He seemed eager to take it. He hugged the chunk of rock to his chest like a newborn baby. Colours swam in the stone, a sight changed in his eyes. The old man, 49ers, breached the door and still unleashed hell. Fra stops 
Scratch your phone and use the hand to rub her eyes. Finally, she turns back to a sour look. I went down in that room well. I've only seen that kind of carnage a couple of times in my life, and I've been running the shadows for years. Those tried men were torn to scraps by the end. Don't think I'll ever forget the sounds they made. I uh, spent most of the fight holding the corner for my own safety. What Sue let loose from the zone didn't seem terribly interesting to discriminate between friend and foe. That's something like that. Truth be told, I don't know. Did it summon a hostile spirit or something? Something like that. Truth be told, I don't know what they were. Like I said, I was hiding, but he could have done it without the shiny object. Not in a million years. Whatever they were, the rock brought them here. So what happened then? We waited for things to calm down in the vault and for things to go slivering away. I think that Sue had some limited control over them, which is why they didn't eat us. After they were gone, Sue gave me the shiny object back. I put it in my satchel and we bailed. We collected the others and went away. They were blissfully ignorant of what happened on the other side of the warehouse, and I didn't see reason to change that. We hightailed it back to docks and caught the first boat back to sink and ship. Mission accomplished. She looks away, says from space. From what, I, what I'm told, people still avoid in this warehouse like a plague. It's supposed to be haunted even to this day. People who set foot in that building end up turn up dead. Pretty sure I'm the only live. I'm only the. I'm pretty sure I'm one of the only living people who knows why. Abruptly, her body language changes. Anyway, that's lessons over. I've got any questions. Go ahead. What was the moral here? That was when I started telling it. I thought I was going to tell you, but you'd become to breaking the rules. I don't think I'm going to say that now, though. I'm not feeling it anymore. Which team made it out? This one live. I didn't say that way for long, but let's just leave that for next time. I don't want to get into it now. Okay. Let's take a break. Of course, like I said. Uh, let's get back to the lesson you were teaching. Any more about the sinking ship? I moved in the sinking ship when I was just a kid. In the beginning, it was just me and a couple of rat shamer friends. Could have. They were older, but they were always cool with me. Typical for rat shamans to congregate? Not terribly, no. We we have lodges, same as any other group of shamans. You usually find a few of us hanging out in those. I guess there's just something special about a little group. Maybe a sinking ship. Didn't hurt that sinking ship was well stocked and provisioned when we uh, found it. And uh, don't look at it like that. It was abandoned when we took it. There was a team of shadows that had lived there before us, but they bid it on a job. Cad and Mao heard the knock of opportunity and they claimed the arrived for rat in record time. Taking over the sinking ship wasn't an easy job, mind you. The previous owners had installed traps and automated defences. Sounds really close to like a floating death trap. That actually isn't too far off. There are explosive pop-up turrets, all the good stuff. Cad and his sister Yasmin took care of most of it without much trouble though. The biggest problem was scuttling scuttling charges. The runners who built the raft had installed these explosive well, long perimeter that ripped the bottom of the thing if it ever seized by its police. For those who were tricky to deal with, Cad was able to disarm them, but we had to leave them where they were. I was always just slightly uncomfortable knowing that I was sleeping on top of a couple of hundred pounds of dormant explosives. Hey, like I said, I was free. There weren't really any rules to follow, which suited me fine. Mal was sort of the leader of our little nest, but we never really listened to her. She was always trying to play the mum card. It's still a sense of responsibility to us. It was cute. I did have a problem for getting things done, though. I have to give her that. Anyway, after a few months, other people started showing up. Squatters, homeless, runners... Sort of crazy. As long as they stay cool with us, we, we were cool with them. Eventually it became a community. Imagine that. Okay. Do you, I don't know. Maybe. Never really thought about it. But yeah, maybe. I guess that I'm a water rat now. Let's take a break and back to this later. Talk to you later, Goblet. Hey, Seattle. I'm sorry. The lesson wound up getting a little off and folks at the end. Not sure what came over me. It's cool. Don't worry about it. Well, I still feel bad about it, so look, I'll make you a deal. Your next lesson will definitely be a point, and I'll tell you what it's about up front. No more question and answer sessions. How's that sound? Fine by me, Mark. Goblet, catch you next time. Next time. Bloody hell. Alright, I can't deal with any more conversations. I need to, uh... Need to go and do a run. I want to earn some cash. I think I've got one more run left, and I think it's Schwen... More Feng Shui shit. I've left this one till last. One unread message. Urgent problem. We have a problem to solve. It's urgent. Meet me at the Mahjong Parlor kindly. I wonder if this is Max Law. I've only sold him like two bits of data, but... We shall see. Cup of tea. Hmm. Strangler bow, 
stands impassively, muscular arms fall across the chest, low nose and sail smell of the Mijong parlour. Seem to glare off him, the noise, low noise, not nose. He ignores you and nod. We have a problem. Maximum law. He's been talking to him in the Matrix about your jobs. It's drawing attention. Kindly wants him shut up. Uh, law's been gossiping. That's not good. I, I, I've noticed. I've been meaning to handle that. Good. But you've been slow. Law isn't being discreet. He needs to be discreet. Your job is to fix the situation. Don't bother finding me when you're done. Unless there's something to clean up. I've got better things to do with my time. Any questions? Law's got leverage. He's Wompton. Leverage. He's entry level. The Wompton's recruit a lot of fresh meat and cut, cut those who are unfit. We are the ones who have poor Wompa. Law pushes the wheelbarrow. Alright, I'll take care of it. If you need to kill him, don't make the neighbourhood scene. That upsets people. Just like you're from here. Respect for all the peace. It may be difficult. You'll probably need to do it on the boat of his. He almost never leaves it. He needs to be handled soon. Thank you, Cage. Your skill is appreciated. How's your protection, Mr. Bowe? Uh, as is your protection. Good day, Mr. Bowe. Uh, nice bit of respect. Alright. Well, Max. Thankfully, I, I've bought my upgraded programs from you, so I'm happy with that. Lord, we, we need to talk privately, it's important. Yo, I'm your man for that. Lord glances around with almost comic fugitiveness. Here, I can't leave the palace. That's okay, we can talk here. Just keep your voice down and turn off your open sign for a moment. Yeah, you got it. Anybody ever tell you you're kind of spooky guy, Cage? You kind of are. Lord Boats obscures you from the shore, and his bulky piles of tarp, shielded electronics somewhat obscure him from the boardwalk. Concealment is poor and, dynamite, and dynamic at best, but at least the lanes of visibility are confined. I dig the shade in this, I dig it. Now, I am your man for serious business. What's up? You've been talking about me and my team on the BBS, and people are sniffing around. Ah, uh, people talk, whatever, it's no big deal. The BBS and the Wampa board are secure. This is what Wampa does, we handle info. No, the BBC isn't secure. It's not supposed to be. Deccan. No, they aren't. They're anonymous. They're, no, they're not secure. They're anonymous. What, what do you mean? The data havens. You're not actually Deccan, are you? The data havens are anonymous and hard and not secret. They're not, you're not actually Deccan, are you? The data havens are anonymous and hardened, not secret. Blood drain. You're, you're serious, aren't you? Okay, no. Oh, fuck, man. What have I done? He swallows hard. Sweet sweat runs and streams down his face from under his VR, but he breathes heavily. A quick glance around reveals that there's a lull in the usually busy foot traffic. There are only a few people are in sight. This may be the only opportunity to kill him. When code Mr. Hayes and Wampa, it gets deleted. You follow. Um, you're an asset to Hio and Wampa, but you need to be discreet. Can you be discreet? I don't actually like this kid, to be honest. When code misbehaves and Wampa, it gets deleted. You follow, you need to conform to spec. What should I do? Um, do I want to get him out of town? Do I want to shut your mouth, play smart, you'll be fine. Uh, he's a rookie kid. Do I, I don't really want to run him out of town. Keep your mouth shut, play smart, you'll be fine. Uh, thanks, Cage. Running is dark and don't... You just came very close to dying. Your cage. How how can I style up the kind of what you need? Oh, oh, I want some armor off him, don't I? Yeah, I want the street up armor. God, three grand. Okay, um, let's go back to the boat and pick up one last job.
I want a bit more cash and I want to see if I can get bloody XP to get um, my karma so I can get my quick so uh, messages problem solved so you have solved the problem kindly will be pleased good open jobs directory pending jobs geomantic sabotage oh yeah this is yeah, I read this uh, really early on. This is what this is one of the first jobs you get given potentially. Okay, so I infiltrate the sky tower. I fuck around in the offices down below, but then I go up top and I ruin the garden. Yeah. Right. How much cash I got left on me? That much. What gear do I have on me? Okay, that's cool. Right, and what karma do I need to spend? Oh, bloody hell, I'm miles off chain shot. That's 21 XP. I need to put my quickness up, I need to put my range combat up, and I need to put my pistol up. Bloody hell. Oh, and my decking is seriously suffering because of it. Right, so 20 XP later, I'll get chain shot. Blimey. That doesn't bode well, does it? Have a look, see where we are. Geomantic sabotage just sounds so silly. Still only haste two on goblet. Duncan. Our gear hasn't changed, it seems. So, what's I want to look at? Wow. Actually, Isabel's decking is no better than mine. Intelligence 6 and then decking 5. Uh, she's got ESP 5, though. The difference. Plus, she carries a grenade launcher. Um, confirm. Confirm. Alright, let's do this run. At least get half the run done before the episode ends. Bad Chi. The subway flies over the tracks towards Aberdeen. Monsoon. Monsoon humidity clings to your skin as it follows you from Hio, or perhaps simply sunk this far into the earth, penetrating the sonar machine, rousing the acid smells of Hong Kong's underground into its wake. You've been handed a promising job, geomantic sabotage, with a single objective to disrupt the flow of what's in the Chi to destabilize the corp. Your client is especially keen on the idea of Wuxin's famed geomancy being used against it, the ultimate humiliation. While the corporation's offices space is a free game, the main target is a treasured lotus statue, which resides within a temple on the topmost floor of the monolithic building. Your client's instructions are clear. The more damage you do, the worse the cheat, the better the pay. Right. Um. Right, so I want to take one of these off. I want to give it to Goblet. Can I give you that spell now? Nope. At this point, I need to sell that. Because I don't think Goblet's um, spell casting is ever going to get up to five. Yep, good. Right, confirm. Yeah, I should have just sold it. The subterranean access ways open to one of the Wuxin Sky Tower's few employee-only entrances. As the only underground access point to Wuxin's restricted levels, security is tight. No one reaches the upper floors who shouldn't. Client, though, through kindly, was only able to provide you with front door ID. The spoof credentials won't get you further than that, but the client suggested that there may be other ways to bypass check-in systems inside the building. A sturdy Wuxin security officer peers at you from behind his desk. Evening, sir. Swipe yourself in. He gestures. Uh, swipe 
There you go. He looks at the console, then back at you. His eyebrows raise. You realise your credentials only allow you access through the front, through through floor 10, right? Charisma 4. Of course, I have new credentials waiting for me with the extended coverage. That's why I'm entering here to pick them up. The officer nods curtly. Right, go ahead and grab your new creds at the check-in terminal. Have a good night, sir. Charisma 4. Okay. Right, and they didn't mention the ghoul. Employees only beyond this point. Um, let's do this first. Oh, Matrix. Um, let's click that and see what our options are. No, I need to... Let's see what this Matrix can do for us. There's a... Nothing. What? I'm pretty sure I have my deck on me. Yeah, I do. Check in. Please enter your employee uh, spoofed ID. Oh, shit. Any further attempts to access Terminal 4 or refresh your employee? Why can't I use that data? Because I assume I meant to go in there. Oh, that's frustrating. Um... I really don't want to go dicking around with um, security checkpoint. That seems a bit foolish. That seems like a bathroom. Uh, leave. Can't do that. Security guard. You seem confused, so yeah, I need to get into the maintenance room. He eyes you. Maintenance? Are you telling me that after my nine years of working here, you don't recognise me? What kind of half-cracked guard is in hiring these days? Uh, I don't. Please forgive me, sir. I just let me see your idea. Fine. Give spruce ID. This doesn't give you access to my maintenance facilities. If you're with another works in maintenance crew, your idea won't work here, only your jurisdiction. I can't let you through. Okay, that's nice. Let me access the matrix so I can make one. No. Fuck sakes. Verify credentials? I'm sure that's gonna just fuck up. Please enter your no. Exit. Okay, let's click that, see what it does. Verify, enter spoofed, warning. Let's just wait, then a security can come up and talk to me. No. Send a security off a fact by two bloody guards. Breach you. Good evening, we apologize for the incident, but you must check in with the books in terminal before you can use the elevators. Okay. What? I must be missing something. Alright, I can talk to him. A couple of ways to those, I'm around the business side of the corporate locker room. One flings jack into the locker room turns to the showers. It's met by your stare. His rear eyes point in surprise. Ah, good evening. He glances behind him and is assured by something. Turns back with a smile. I'm Charles. Haven't seen you. New here? Not exactly. I'm an outside security consultant. Put on the spot check. He's straight back. Oh, right. I learned about this in training. Please, tell me. How can I help? You've been selected for random screening. I need your ID and credentials, please. Of course, here. Here you go. That was easy. I don't know why I couldn't fucking go into the... Uh, check in. Swipe to Solon. Nope. That matrix terminal does not work. Um... I don't really want to go to security guard. Can I use this ID instead? Because I've already done that. Can I just go in now?
Uh, swipe employee ID. Great. Um, no thanks. Alright, can't talk to you because I didn't have a fake ID. Can I verify this? See what it does. Identity verified. Uh, maintenance and research access. Great, so now I can do this, but I've already used that conversation node. It's killed it. So how the fuck do I progress now? Done things out of order. Just a minute, so the scanner says your credentials didn't take. Let me see your ID. Trespassers alerts. Oh, fuck it. <sighs> Times like these, where you go, fuck. And then you get behind some cover. Now she goes, Heaven starts! And goes choppy choppy. Oh, well, I missed. There you go, that's better. Um, can you do a kill shot? Oh, you can. Kill shot. Cover. Oh look, we can double tap. Let's just do you first. Uh, that should be enough. Double tap you. Really? You're in the fog, why aren't you taking damage? Oh, you're kidding me. Didn't kill him. Um, who should we haste up? Not sure at the moment. Metal stance. 
Oh shit, I didn't see those two guys back there. It's a long throw. Can you throw a shuriken at him, please? Good man. Heaven! I don't get what the point of double tap is. Oh, it increases critical hit. It's kind of crap. I'm not impressed with that. Big hit. Nice. Um, I think she's just gonna go that way for the time being. Well, that's buff. Uh, yep, that'll do. Two guys left. Lame. Right. Come on this side. Aim shot. Oh. Boom. Kaiju. Slice. Slice some more. How much are you win it by? Two. Let's just finish this. Okay. Awesome. Right. That's finished, but um, that was not cool. Really didn't know how to um, deal with that. Still can't use that matrix point. At least get in there now. No. Search desk. Heightened access employee keycard. Oh, thank you very much. Security. Swipe in. Welcome, Mr. Pang. Have a nice evening. Verify credentials. Back. Check in. Nope. It makes no sense. If I can get into the matrix with that keycard. Nope. Okay, I can't get into the matrix at all. I'm so confused on this run. Well, anyway, I think before we head upstairs, we are going to leave it there for this episode. So thank you for joining me for yet another episode of Shadowrun Hong Kong. And I hope you join me next time. Until then, I'll see you later.